Thank you for joining us for Chapter 2 of this three-part webinar series, Solving the Plastic Pollution Crisis Through Hotspotting, an introduction to the UNEP IUCN National Guidance for Plastic Pollution Hotspotting and Shaping Action. The guidance is co-developed by the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, and the Life Cycle Initiative with Technical Implementation by EA Qantas. The primary users of the guidance are governments. They can use the results of the analysis to design, plan and implement policy instruments and actions to reduce plastic pollution. The guidance is designed to be used primarily at national level, but the approach can be adapted to accommodate policymakers at sub-national and local levels. Stakeholders from the private sector, academia and NGOs can support the application of the guidance and benefit from the results as well. This chapter will cover two of the countries in which the guidance, tools and modules have been piloted to date, Thailand and Kenya. This methodology has been used, or is being used, in several countries to date. Cyprus, Menorca, Spain, Kenya, Mozambique, South Africa, Tanzania, Thailand and Vietnam. If you missed chapter one, it covered the guidance, tools and modules in depth and Chapter 3 will cover policy and business. It's a pleasure to present and to share the application of this methodology within the Eastern and Southern African region and to highlight the key results of at least one country, and in this case, Kenya. So I'll mention that I'll, I'm only giving an overview as the full results are quite detailed and are captured in a detailed report that will be available soon to all the stakeholders participating herein once it's validated with national stakeholders. And so just to recap something that Julian already said, the full country reports contain more details on the five hotspot categories, the actionable hotspot formulations and an initial dose of interventions and instruments that we could consider that are already contextualized to the priority hotspots for the specific country. So on this slide, I, I provide a breakdown of the country overview into three logical parts. The first part is a more global view. The second part is we zoom into some select hotspots. And then the third part, we try to outline how these two, and the results, help in shaping action and other interventions at the national level. So starting from the left side, we see that in Kenya, of about 506,000 tons of plastic waste generated every year. 92% of it is mismanaged. And some of you wonder why, why is such a high rate, yet collection we are saying is 27. It's because mismanaged is related to waste that is improperly disposed, uncollected, or leaking waste. And this will become much more clear in the next slide. So in terms of collection, the collection rate in Kenya average is quite low, 27%, which is just about 136,000 tons of the five or six kilotons, which means that the bulk of the waste, plastic waste in Kenya, is either lying in some environmental compartment, maybe in the terrestrial or aquatic environments, or in some other place, like dump sites or illegal places where waste is just get to, to accumulate. So in the case of Kenya, maybe one of the things that really contributes to this picture is the fact that there is not a single sanitary landfill in the country. And so if, for example, we were to have five sanitary landfills in the country, then you'd see that the mismanaged rate will significantly maybe go down, especially if that waste is emanating from high waste generating areas. And so in a case where a lot of this is being mismanaged, it's definitely bound to leak, irrespective of where it ends up. If it ends up in a Tandora dump site, it will still leak. And the per capita leakage rate in Kenya is not as high as what you'd expect maybe in countries which are developing quite rapidly. It's 0 0.8 kilograms per person per year. When you compare that to other countries, I think you'll see in upcoming slides for Thailand, which is almost seven or eight fold this particular figure, and for South Africa is almost double that. So if we go to the middle section of the slide, in terms of uh, 
hotspots. We just zoom into the polymer hotspots where we found that the top four leaking polymers in absolute leaking terms are PP, polyester, PET, and LDPE, which cumulatively account for about 70% of plastic leakage in the country. But then in terms of uh, the leakage rates, there are, there are different dimensions to that. In fact, if you look at PET, for example, which ranks that in terms of absolute volumes, it's quite high when it comes to leakage rate. Because if you look at the flow path from maybe production to consumption to it ending up in some environmental compartment, it's it's quite rapid. So the, the leakage rate for PET is the highest in the country. And then we also see like both ETs in the country account for about 35% of waste waste management. So interventions, for example, in just these four cities already gives us some, some good output in terms of uh, reducing or diverting plastic waste from ending up in the oceans. And then the convergence of these results, as already pointed out by Julian, is that it helps us engage more effectively with country stakeholders, and so helping us align towards pursuing some strategic actions, instruments, and measures that are blessed by science that at least address the real problem, not based on emotions or maybe visuals of maybe people seeing plastics accumulating in some corner or something like that. So in terms of shape, shaping action, for the case of Kenya, we already have 11 actionable hotspots. And an example is widespread littering reduces the amount of waste collected for recycling. And then we have a set of accompanying instruments that span very many different areas from knowledge, capacity building, innovation, economic, and policy and regulatory frameworks. So there's definitely different options to address the different hotspots. And then what the results also help in doing is in a country like Kenya, where extended producer responsibility is becoming a very important topic and the country is trying to put measures to get producers and brand owners and related to address their specific plastic strains, waste streams. PET is, is a priority in Kenya. So in such a case, for example, you can go to the particular polymer PET and set your baselines and targets using the baseline that has been developed by this particular analysis. So in such case, you don't need to invest more to get like additional or repeat the process. So it saves countries resources from that dimension. And then the other maybe cost saving aspect that I can highlight is it also helps countries to avoid investing immense resources to address non-priority plastic or polymer leakages. Where for example you can go to you can go for a particular polymer like PVC, yet you find its prioritization as a hotspot or even in terms of impact further downstream in the oceans is, is quite insignificant or minimal. So in such a case, I think that's very strategic. So in terms of a baseline, as Julian already pointed out, we start with a mass balance approach. So on the left chart, we can see some key plastic inputs. And in the case of Kenya, we find that all plastics are imported into the country in either product form or primary virgin plastic. And on the output, output bar, we try to account for the export of primary and products that are manufactured within the country of Kenya, in mostly the eastern, eastern African region. Then we account for change in stock, we account for waste, and we also account for recycling. Something of interest is these bars will change depending on maybe what is happening in the country at the moment, where when, for example, there is rapid development going on within the country, the change, the increase in stock component, for example, we find expands a bit more and pushes the other bars maybe upwards or downwards. And on the west side of things, I mentioned that a very tiny fraction of waste is exported. Some, some gets recycled, as already mentioned from the previous slide, but the bulk of it ends up as mismanaged waste. So the local recycled component is about just 7%, which is quite minimal, as this is only about 35.4 thousand tons. 
On the leakage side of things, we see that about 37,000 tons of plastic waste leaks into the oceans every year. So one might wonder why it's a low leakage rate when we have about 465,000 tons of mismanic waste. And I think Paola has already pointed out that there are a number of factors which account for which plastic ends up in in the oceans, so that you can't find maybe plastic from Turkana in the northwest ending up in the oceans. So on the right bar, we are looking at a granular on the right chart, we're looking at granular data on mismanic waste index of different plastic polymers, of which we see majority of them are much higher than the Jambe benchmark for Kenya of 85%. So this kind of result is especially useful for companies that put products out there in the market in terms of helping them understand their levels of pollution of maybe specific products of polymers. And in the case of Kenya, you don't see major differences in the bars. And that's largely associated or linked to the low recycling rate in the country. So in the next case country, you see that where there are interventions for particular polymers, then you, you see significant differences between the MWIs of mismanaged waste indexes of the bars. So the analysis also helps us to generate maps that at least visually show us the rates of mismanaged waste from different parts of the country. And that's denoted on the map you're looking at with the red to maroon colors and also the leakage rate emanating from the fishery sector. So if you look at the yellow, for example, you see some of the, I don't know whether it's yellow or orange, to give my color blindness. Some of it is in like light shade and some is dark shade. So you can at least zoom in into where maybe there's a lot more fisheries activity and maybe there's more disposal abandonment of, of fishing gear. And then the other major observation you get to get from this visual expression is that when you look at the map, you find that where there are major cities and urban areas, a lot of waste generation tends to emanate from there. And in the case of Kenya, we find there's quite varied variation in terms of the spectrum of waste generation, where urban areas generate as high as 30 kilograms per person per year, and rural areas generate as low or as low as four kilograms per person per year. So there's that variation, but I think all I can say with this is the more granular data you can get maybe from each sub-county and even moving to the world level, then you can get like a really good resolution map of where waste is coming from, how it's being addressed, and where it's going. So I think with that, I'll stop there. And thank you very much, Lynn. Good. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Maeve Nightingale. I'm calling, uh, speaking to you from Bangkok this evening. Um, I coordinate the Coastal and Marine Program for the IUCN Asia region, covering Southeast Asia and South Asia, um, including the, the regional marine plastic work. Um, so this first slide here is very similar. The, this um, example is very similar to the example you just heard from Kenya, follows a very similar format. Um, I will be discussing the, the Thailand country report. Um, this is the cover of that report. Um, and as has been mentioned, once um, validated, this Thailand country report will be shared online. Um, but as you can see from the Kenya report, it represents a huge body of work that has been completed in terms of putting data together and, and, and looking at it from an analytical perspective. So in the next three slides, similar to the report from Kenya, I will take you through uh, some of the headline results that are coming from the National Hotspot Assessment for Thailand. So this is the starting with the Thailand Hotspot Overview. This shows a summary of the key result areas. Um, behind these figures, of course, is a, some very dense information. Um, there are the same three parts, some of the summary as for the Kenya report, the left-hand side showing the global overview, the middle section, the highlights from the hotspots, and then the third section moves to sh the shaping action, looking at, at uh, actions and interventions that um, respond to the assessment results. So if we start on the left-hand side, looking at the headlines, we see that 65% of waste generated 
in Thailand is collected. But about, about about 50 percent of that collected waste is going to landfills and is unfortunately improperly managed. So when you look at that in the context of the 35 percent of waste generated, which is uncollected, this results in the mismanaged waste rate that you see there of 66 percent. Um, in Thailand, about 10 percent of waste generated is collected for recycling. Um, most of this, which is 7%, is recycled locally or domestically. And overall, in Thailand, we have, see 483,000 tons of plastic leaking into the ocean every year, which is the equivalent of 7 kilograms per capita leakage, which, as Peter has mentioned, is quite a big difference from Kenya's 0 0.8, per, 8 kilos um, per capita leakage. If you turn to the middle section here, you see the, the highlights from some of the three of the hotspots. Looking at the applications or products, we see that the top two uh, concerns relate to the thin film nylon bags, um, shopping bags, carrier bags that are used in Thailand, and then the smaller cellophane uh, uh, food packages, which is used by the um, a lot by the um, street food industry. When we look at the polymers and the t or the different types of plastics, we see LDPE and HDPE as two of the major polymers of, of major concern in the Thailand context. And the third section of the middle looks at the different stages of the, the waste management uh, process. And we see a number of red dots there. The more red dots, the, the worse the attribute, attribution of the, the leakage issue in terms of waste management and the different stages of waste management. So we see there clearly issues with waste generation, waste collection, and, and waste-related behavior, um, as well as infrastructure. Here we see the Thailand baseline figures um, starting on the left with the material flow where we see the, the left column um, is uh, inputs, including that large purple section that shows import of production of and production of primary plastic and the column on the, on the right showing the output including that pale purple section that, that looks at export. So you can see that Thailand is both a producer and a, an exporter of plastic. Um, more than half of plastic produced or imported in Thailand is ultimately exported. Um, by contrast, you saw with the Kenya report um, that um, um, Kenya is a net importer of plastic and, and it's very, very small amount, very insignificant amount of, of export um, in, in the Kenya, in, from Kenya. The amount of waste imported, you will also notice that small section in dark green on the left column, um, um, shows you the import of um, waste. And you will note if you look at the small section here, the pale green on the right, it is larger than the recycling capacity of Thailand. So we, waste imported to Thailand is 556 kilotons. And the, the the recycling capacity of Thailand is 500 kilotons. And there's a lot more that we are interested to understand around the, the systems and the recycling um, value chains that, that are going on in, in Thailand right now. This has flagged up a very interesting area for, for looking further into. You'll also see a new bar on this bar chart on the left, which you didn't see in Kenya, which is the properly disposed in blue in the right-hand column. And this says properly disposed waste of 2 million and 90 kilotons, which we didn't see that in Kenya. And we attribute this, of course, to the, the, more, um, the, the, um, the access to sanitary landfill system that is available in Thailand. If we move over now to the right-hand side of the slide, the mismanaged waste index by polymer. Um, and maybe of most interest here, is you see that most of, all of the figures, in fact, are, are below the baseline presented in the, in the Jambek report. And we can consider that, of course, um, most of the areas within Thailand are considered, uh, considered coastal areas. Um, and that's what the Jambek report focused on. But if we just draw attention here to the, to the 
the, the first bar from the bottom, the PET, and we can see that there is a lower rate of mismanagement, uh, mismanaged waste index on the wa mismanaged waste index here of 28%. That means 28% chance of PET being mismanaged, which is relatively low. And this is attributed to the fact that there are PET, there is high levels of PET collection and recycling in Thailand. There's a well-established market and value chains um, for PET in Thailand. If we compare that then to the fourth dark purple bar, the LDPE, we see that this uh, low-density polyethylene has a 68% waste management index um, because it really is not being recycled at a significant level in Thailand. It's not being targeted and collected. And, and as Peter mentioned as well, this is proving to be very interesting information for companies as well, for them to understand what gets into the market and which polymers are contributing to the overall leakage um, um, in the system. And finally, we look at Thailand regional hotspots um, or the subnational hotspots. On the left, you see a map of hotspots relating to waste generation. And on the right, you see a map showing plastic leakage. The, the pinks and reds are looking at uh, leakage on land um, as, a, as a result of land-based uh, uh, inputs. And the, the yellow coloring is showing uh, plastic leakage from fishing debris uh, at sea source of marine debris. Thank you for watching and following chapter two of this three-part webinar series, Solving the Plastic Pollution Crisis Through Hotspotting, an introduction to the UNEP IUCN National Guidance for Plastic Pollution Hotspotting and Shaping Action. We would like to thank the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency and the Ministry of Climate and Environment of Norway, EA Qantas, the Life Cycle Initiative and the teams at IUCN and UNEP for making this work possible. To learn more and to download the guidance, tools and modules, please visit the Lifecycle Initiative website posted on the screen. Also, do not forget to visit the IUCN's Close the Plastic Tap program website shown on screen to learn more about our initiatives in tackling plastic pollution.